E85 fuel. What is it? How is it made? Should you use it? What are the pros? What are the negatives? What are the cons? What are the chons? Let's get into it. So E85 fuel is a blend of 85% alcohol and usually 15% petrol. Blends can range from 51% alcohol to 49% petrol as well. That is a lower grade, but it's allowed to kind of be in that range. Ethanol is found in a heap of different household items like vodka, hand sanitizer, detergents, even some pharmaceuticals. So how is it made? Ethanol is produced from corn and sugarcane crops. The crop is first harvested and then ground and mixed with the water to create mashed potato. Enzymes, which are proteins, are added to the mash to break down the starches into simple sugars. Yeast is added to ferment the sugars into ethanol and carbon dioxide. The resulting mixture is known as beer and is then distilled to remove impurities and increase the ethanol concentration. Petrol is added to the distilled ethanol to reduce the strength and then create the desired blend for what we call E85. After that, it's shipped off to the fuel stations. Only a few fuel stations, not every fuel station. So what are the positives of E85? One, it has a higher octane rating and burns cleaner than normal petrol. The highest octane you can get from the pump here in Australia is 98, which is your BP Ultimate Premium, your Vortex, I don't even know what it's called in other servos, but yeah, so E85 is 105 octane, which means faster, we go faster. Another positive is that it actually burns cleaner. So if you have ever been around a car that has E85 running, you'll notice a nice smell coming from the exhaust. So if you go to Call the Park or if you go to any drag racing, you'll see and, and you'll smell it and, you'll, and it mixes with the rubber and it's like, oh yeah, I'm at the car racing now. So it actually burns a lot cleaner than normal fuel. It's better for the environment. However, there's more production effort that gets put into it. So it kind of like, it's kind of a bit counterproductive. So another positive is it gives you better engine safety. E85 cools the engine more effectively than petrol. And if your car is tuned specifically for E85, it allows your tuner to run more ignition timing and boost levels if your car is supercharged or turbo. It has a less chance of the engine knocking or detonating. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that is where the excessive heat pressure in the combustion chamber causes the air and fuel to ignite on its own without the spark plug, potentially damaging the engine. That's a very brief overview of what that is. Look that up in more detail if you can be. So that just means better engine safety. And the last positive is that E85 is cheaper than normal petrol. Hang on, it used to be, not anymore. I think there's a shortage. I'm not really sure, it's 2023 now. And ever since I put my car on E85, the price has been locked at $2.19 from United. Like what the hell? And you look up the wholesale pricing and it's actually cheaper than unleaded. So I don't know what's going on. It, United's making a ton off E85. Can we get this fixed? <laughs> now we go on to the negatives. So one of the main negatives of E85 is its availability. So only a few selected service stations across Australia have E85. If you have one near your house, like that is awesome. But if you don't, you may have to drive 10, 20, 30, 40 K to even find the stuff. And if it's a weekly thing, that can become pretty inconvenient for you. The other negative is it's not very efficient to make. So it obviously comes from corn and sugars and all. I don't really know exactly how it works. I'm just making this for this video. But um, yeah, there's tractors plowing and there's, and there's, you know, all these inefficiencies, like the people at the factory just taking too long lunch breaks and it's just not happening. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Another negative is you get way less kilometers per tank. So it takes a whole lot more E85 to do the same thing that a smaller amount of petrol will do. So I think you require 40% more than E85, than petrol. Yeah, mm, yeah. So E85 burns 40% more than petrol to do the same job. So this means you have to have a bigger fuel system in your car or it'll be very limited to what you can do with it. If you don't have a big fuel system on your car, and by big, it's all relative, I guess. Like it might be big compared to your standard system, but it's not that big compared to the drag car. So this can mean bigger fuel pumps, bigger fuel lines, bigger injectors, all that kind of stuff to make sure you're getting enough in there to send it. Another negative of V85 is it contaminates your oil in your vehicle faster than it would with just normal unleaded fuel. Because there's so much E85 getting put into the piston chambers that is then mixing with the oil, therefore compromising the oil's quality. So in most cases, you should actually change your oil depending on how hard you push your car from 
from up to a thousand Ks. So you can just do a thousand kilometers and have to change your oil. Or if you want to really push it 5,000 Ks, I do mine at two and a half thousand Ks religiously. This can be pretty costly too if you're doing a lot of kilometers. So, and usually your higher quality engines use a high quality oil and you're changing them more frequently and it's cold starts can also be an issue. However, there's certain tuning techniques that can get around this. My car's on an E85 and it starts first pop every time. Another negative is condensation in the fuel tank. I don't know how exactly how it exactly works, but somehow if you don't send it every time you drive it, condensation builds up in the tank and can end up in the fuel and then your car will run crap and splatter and it's probably not safe for it. So yeah, it's important to actually uh, send it a little bit when you're, when you're on an E85 on every drive, just to blow the condensation out. Another thing that some people have learned the hard way is that E85 fuel can actually go off and it does depend on the situation. So if it's in an air tight sealed tank, I think it lasts longer, but if it's just in your fuel tank when the fuel cap's kind of on, but there's air leaking in there, it can go off for in as little as three months. And I've heard stories of people going to tune their car after it's sitting in the garage for three, four months and they popped their engine because the E85 was off. And that's that's a really, really sad, sad moment. So is the E85 for you? After what I've just listened to then, you can probably understand whether you think it is for you or not. The main benefit is basically more horsepower. If you have the right fuel system, better engine safety and the downfalls, more fuel consumption, costs more at the moment, it used to be cheaper, but it's not anymore. You get you, you have more frequent oil changes, your condensation. Yeah, it's up to you. You have to pay the price if you wanna go fast. So hope you, this video taught you something. Have a lovely night guys. Subscribe for more videos and car content and I'll see you in the next one.